It's another edition of the Beach Grove Scouting Report as uh, the high school basketball tournament gets ready to kick into full gear. I'm Mark James with uh, Beach Grove Athletic Director and Head Basketball Coach Matt English. And Coach, before we start talking about basketball, uh, I know a tough start to the tournament. Didn't stick around long talking about Evan Smiley. He did get knocked out of the tournament by the eventual state champion. But, you know, the, the interest uh, that Evan brought to the school uh, the enthusiasm that his appearance in the state finals pumped into it. Uh, he has nothing to be ashamed of, and we appreciate all he did for Beach Grove. Well, certainly he has nothing to be ashamed of. Um, you know, I think sometimes that gets lost in athletics when kids lose after they've advanced that far in a tournament or teams lose. I think people have to remember it's a heck of an accomplishment just to get that far. And the other thing that you pointed out, I think it's a really good thing for our, our community and for our wrestling program for people to – there was an enthusiasm about sure. Evan being there, and hopefully uh, some of the guys, the younger people in the program can build off that, and our coaches can build off it, and we can get some more guys there. Uh, number 99 in the history of this program to a, a compete in a state championship, and Coach Irwin and his staff, uh, congratulations. Uh, Coach Irwin, in his first season as head wrestling coach, gets a wrestler to the state finals, and all we can expect for him now is to get two, three, maybe four there next year. But congratulations to Coach Irwin, Evan Smiley on their appearance at the state finals. And uh, we know that Evan will have a great offseason and uh, just sophomore. And we expect him to be back bigger and stronger next year. Well, let's talk about basketball. One and one on the season. That close. Uh, you know, there's a fine line between uh, success and failure. And I'm not saying you failed. But it's such a fine line, and at no weekend was that more evident than last weekend for your basketball team. Certainly not. And, you know, it's again, sometimes you wonder about yourself and your, your sanity and your mental health when one play can make the determination whether you had a good night or a bad night. But uh, the thing I really like about our kids right now is we're playing our best at the latter stages of the season. We're getting better. Sure. We're getting tougher. We're getting more competitive. And the other thing I really like is we still have room to get better. Right. And that's what we talked to our guys about earlier this week. Um, we're playing better, but we can still be better. And uh, it's kind of exciting as we approach the tournament. Yeah, we don't want to leave you folks on the outside looking in and uh, speaking codes and whatever. What we're talking about is last weekend in which uh, Beach Grove gets a big win at home over Triton Central on Friday night. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But on Saturday night, one of the best teams of the state in Batesville, uh, Beach Grove travels to Batesville and with seven seconds left has an opportunity to win the basketball game. Uh, some things happen, uh, turnover, uh, they throw one in at the buzzer. You end up uh, a very difficult loss to, to swallow 53-51. You texted me pretty quickly after it was <laughs> over. And uh, I, I know that you were awfully proud of your kids, but I think you would agree your program's to the point to where you're not interested in moral victories. No, definitely not. And the kids weren't either. If you could have seen our guys in the locker room after the game, they were hurting. Sure. They, they wanted that win. They fought for that win. And they were hurting when it didn't happen. Uh, so there's certainly no moral victories. The satisfaction or, or the positives we can take out of that is we talked about. We can play with anybody sure. when we do things that we're supposed to do. Right. Now the improvements we can make, how can we improve for what we just did so that we don't come close but we finish it off? We visited for a few minutes uh, after the Triton Central game on uh, last Friday night. That final was 74-38, and quite frankly, uh, it wasn't that close, seemingly, at times. Uh, and Kerry Chandler has is, is been around basketball a long time, the head coach at Triton Central, and uh, I know that uh, Doug Seagraves, their athletic director, is going to work with him and, and kind of get that program going in the right direction. His kids played hard, but, you know, no disrespect to Triton Central in, intended, but one of the things that you and I talked about is after the game is the fact that you have a tendency sometimes in high school sports to play down to the level of your opponent and again, no disparaging comment uh, intended toward Triton Central. Your kids didn't do that pretty much for four quarters against Triton Central. One of the things we've spent a lot of time talking about the last couple of weeks is in the tournament, you've got to be at your best whenever the bell rings. You, you, there's no time, you know, if you don't play well, you go home. So we've really tried to focus on being ready to go and making sure we play four quarters of basketball every time we go out. And we're getting closer to that mm -hmm. right now. You, you actually gave some kids an opportunity on Friday night uh, because an opportunity presented itself with the, with the difference in, 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 in the point totals for each team. But 
I, you probably found a couple of kids that, that might be able to help you in some spots it, in going to your bench. Absolutely. Um, you know, Josh Martin and Tony Heiser, two of our seniors that don't always get to play as much as they'd like, were able to get out there and play. And they did some good things for us. And uh, they'll be able, hopefully, we can call on them this week uh, against Whiteland to help us out some. And then sophomore Marcus Rush got in the game and did some good things. And uh, we're excited about the future, what he can bring. Force. Yeah, no, no question. Marcus has uh, jumped right in there, uh, worked really, really hard to get himself eligible in the classroom. That's the biggest success that I think a lot of people aren't aware of with him. And uh, I, he's he took over a leadership role pretty quickly on that JV team. Uh, Marcus is a really good-natured young man. And you're, you're right. The first thing we need to recognize is he's got himself eligible academically. Right. And the second thing we need to recognize, he can play a little bit. Absolutely. And the guys around him recognize that. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about Marcus is he's a gentle giant. Um, he's a nice young man, and he can blend in with that group. And, and uh, they've really played well here together at the end of the year. Let's get back to your varsity a little bit, talk about Friday night and Saturday night. The thing that impressed me the most and continues to impress me the most is the balance you seem to be developing in your basketball team. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, we have a lot of guys who can contribute, and uh, we were balanced Saturday night again. Corey, I think, finished with 15 or 16. Jalen Dyson had a wonderful game off the bench with 13, 14 points. Joey Cardenas had 12. Uh, Caleb Chumley threw in a couple threes and I think ended up with eight. So uh, going into a game, I don't know who people would key on for us. Uh, because we've got a number of guys who can do things. It seems like your, so your shot selection is getting a lot better. And the reason I bring that up for folks that maybe have not seen the Hornets play in person, shot selection is important because uh, about as big as you go is 6'3". <laughs> and so it's got to be a high percentage good shot in the flow of the offense because, let's face it, uh, you're typically not going to get a lot of second chance points. You know, early in the year, we played like a young team, and we were a young team, uh, and we want to go and we want to play with tempo, but there's a difference between playing with tempo and playing fast, and mm -hmm. I thought we were fast sometimes, and bordering on being out of control. I think one of the t things this team started to learn is, you know, we still want to be aggressive and we want to go, but when we don't have that, we need to move the basketball around and show some poise in the half court. Yeah, and I think the thing that has impressed me over the second half of the season is is they seem to be taking as much ownership in their defense as they take in their offense. That's the easy thing to play for most kids. Defense is the nasty, dirty job, and your kids seem to be embracing that. I think they've started to realize that when we play good defense, number one, it gives us a chance to win, and number two, when we play good defense, it gives us a chance to score. Uh, our defense leads into our offense and allows us to get out and set some tempo. And so our guys have bought in. And again, they've had to, to learn. Um, number one, they're young. Number two, we're not very big. So they had to learn what do we need to do to compete at the varsity level and how can I get position on these bigger guys? And, and uh, it's been a learning curve, but they've responded well. Well, you close out the season Friday night at home. Uh, you'll take on uh, Whiteland, uh, the date February 22nd, depending on when you might be watching this. And uh, I told Michael Jennings in the hallway right before we went on the air with the show, I said, guys, the one game you don't lose in your career is senior night. You, you know, underclassmen, upperclassmen, whatever. Upperclassmen have to protect the home floor on senior night, which they should every night anyway. But certainly underclassmen need to step up and make sure those guys play on the floor for the last time and have a fond memory of doing so. They do, and that's one thing we'll talk about tonight as we get ready to watch some film of Whiteland. Uh, and this is a good lead-in for us to the tournament because Whiteland's aggressive and they've got – they're not – overly big in terms of their size, but they're aggressive. They've got a couple 6'4 kids that'll, that'll be very active. So it's a good game for us to finish the regular season. Uh, what do you need to, to, to just to glean from last Friday and Saturday night and take into this Friday night? Uh, we've really worked hard in our execution uh, this week in the half court offensively because um, in the tournament, you've got to be able to execute when things are tight because it's probably going to be close games somewhere and we've got to make sure we get good shots. So hopefully we'll improve in that aspect. But bottom line is we got to keep playing really hard and be aggressive and be who we are. 
Believe it or not, he talks about the tournament. Hoosier hysteria is upon us. Uh, the boys basketball tournament, uh, the sectional pairings drawn last Sunday at IHSAA headquarters. And of course, uh, the Hornets will head out to Danville and Hendricks County and uh, they won't waste any time. Uh, they drew P1, if you will, if I can make a racing reference there <laughs> on Tuesday night. Uh, they'll take on Indian Creek in game number one at 6 p.m. Game number two will feature Tri-West and Manual. So the Indian Creek Braves with a record of 10 to 9. Some common opponents, Greenwood, Whiteland Speedway. How do we stack up against the Braves? Well, I think we're very evenly matched. Uh, they're not uh, real big in terms of their size, but they're hard-nosed. They play hard. They share the basketball. They're well coached. So I, I think it'll be a great matchup for us. They've got a junior point guard who seems like he's been there for eight years. Um, I told told Derek Perry, their coach, the other day, I wanted to see his birth certificate and see exactly what was going on. But uh, he, he really is sound and solid and does a lot of good things for him. Plus, they're playing three freshmen that can really play. Yeah. Uh, one of them got 16 the other night against Greenwood. So uh, we're going to have to play. But at this point in the year, it's about us playing well and giving ourselves a chance. And um, that's what we're focused on more than anything else. Well, we've used the word toughness uh, numerous times this year to talk about this basketball team. And I don't care what the sport is, having a lot of familiarity with Indian Creek. I don't care if it's Mike Gillen in football. I don't care if it's boys basketball. I don't care if it's track and field, whatever the sport. Those folks down Trafalgar Way do have a toughness about them. They certainly do, and their kids uh, exemplify that. They play hard and they scrap. Uh, I saw them the other night against Greenwood. They were down 16 or 17 points early, but kept clawing and clawing and fighting and had chances to come back and win the game. Just couldn't quite get there. There's, nobody's going to give in Tuesday night. Somebody's going to. Somebody's going to win the game. That'll be a double header. Uh, we talked about Beach Grove and Indian Creek at six at seven thirty. That'll be Tri West with a record of twelve and seven against two and seventeen manual. Then on Friday night, uh, it'll be the winners from game one, which is the Beach Grove Indian Creek game. We'll take on Danville. Danville comes in with a record of fifteen and five. Uh, and then Indianapolis Northwest with a record of 14 and 6 will get the game two winners from Tuesday. If you uh, can't follow all of that, you can go to IHSAA.org and log on there and find all of that information. You can go to our website as well and it'll give you all the details on it. The championship, by the way, is set for 7.30 Saturday night. Uh, no pushovers in this sectional. I mean, there's there's four teams, four of the six above 500. Your ball club is right there with a couple of bounces of the ball here and there. We could have five teams in that sectional at 500 or better. It's unbelievably balanced. Um, Northwest is very athletic, very aggressive, and, and uh, they play really hard. They've got a good ball club. Danville is a senior-laden team playing at home, and they play hard. And Tri-West is very well coached. Coach Bontrager always does a great job. And those kids play. They're tough. They're mm -hmm. hard-nosed, mm -hmm. and, and they're going to be hard to handle. So uh, I think any t anybody could knock off anybody at any point in that tournament. There's no gimmies for sure. You're going to have to play well to win. Well, again, we came back from Christmas break. You and I talked about it. The goal getting through January and February, first of all, get everybody healthy and then make sure you're playing your best basketball. Can you chuck, uh, kind of check both those things off the list for Beach Girl Basketball? We can. We're healthy right now. Again, knock on wood. Um, no, I mean, there's some little nagging things here and there, but nothing of note. And uh, I believe we are playing our best basketball. Our kids have kind of come into their own. They've started to understand how to play well together, and uh, we're getting better. February 22nd, the regular season finale against the Whiteland Warriors here at the Hive. We hope to see all of you there as we uh, wish a fond farewell to our seniors. But their season is not over. Uh, the following Tuesday, we hope for a good crowd on hand at uh, Danville High School as we get ready for tournament time. And uh, Coach English will be back with us next week as Beach Grove takes on Indian Creek in game one on that night, Tri-West versus Manuel in game two. Coach, good luck. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate it. For Matt English, Athletic Director, Head Basketball Coach here at Beach Grove High School, I'm Mark James. Thanks for joining us for the Beach Grove Scouting Report. Again, get out and support the Hornets.